We've seen it all over social media, the faux wood finish. It's the trendiest and newest furniture finish and everyone is trying it. Just like other furniture artists, I could not resist the urge to try it out. So in today's video, I'm gonna take these dark and outdated mismatched nightstands and make them look more like a set with that bright pottery barn dupe finish everyone is going crazy over. There's more than one first for me in this video, aside from doing a new technique, I am also working on a mismatch set for the very first time. The hardware has to go and I'll save it for another project in the future. There was one drawer that needed some repair but I'll leave it be until I get some other stuff done first. Watching myself with my vacuum is a really good reminder to replace my brush head for my shop vac I misplaced months ago. I sprayed a very generous amount of crud cutter to clean everything really good and I am not shy at all with the amount of cleaner I use, as I always do a second pass with just water to remove any leftover residue. This here always serves as a good reminder to why we clean every single piece. I did replace my water before I cleaned the drawers. It's been raining all morning, all day. And I don't have time to be sitting around waiting for it to not rain. So I'm gonna just bring everything inside, close the garage and work inside the garage instead. Finally, I scuff sanded everything and now that I have a proper attachment on my surf prep, it makes sanding a breeze. But do remember that it's not actually necessary to have expensive equipment in order to do it. I've done it for a long time prior to investing into one. There was some gouges and hardware holes that I needed to fill so I took some two part Bondo wood filler, mixed it and filled them in.
For the smaller, not so deep scratches, I used regular wood filler. And I also sand it smooth the other larger areas that needed to be leveled out. Always remember to remove all the dust we created from the sanding before moving on. I'm not brave enough to actually spray without masking first, so I usually stick to just paper and tape or the plastic tape combo to cover the drawers. I repaired the one drawer by adding wood glue to the joints, clamping and adding some brad nails. I don't always use primer in a can because it is pretty pricey, but when I'm in a pinch, it's super convenient and worth the extra money, in my opinion, if I haven't already spent a lot of money in materials. Otherwise, just spraying with my own sprayer is definitely more cost effective. I always liked using a soft high grit sponge to smooth out the primer afterwards. After looking at all the tan and beige colors Bear had to offer, I decided on the color Baja in a satin finish. I do like to dilute it when spraying it. Okay, so I just got done spraying the first coat of color after doing the primer and I just realized that I forgot to fill in the holes on three of the drawers. No, I see two of the drawers. I'm having to go back and wood fill that. 
Once the wood filler is dry, then I'll go ahead and sand it down smooth. I am sanding an additional amount, not just where the wood filler is, so that way I can kind of blend it a little bit better when I go and prime it. Once the primer is dry, then I'll go ahead and add a first layer of paint over the top of that. Wait for that to dry. Once that is dry, then I'll do an additional second coat. I should have paid attention when I filled the other ones because now I'm kind of taking a step back to have to go back and do that. But I didn't get too ahead, so I'm glad I caught that before I was completely done and ready to, you know, put everything together. But anyways, it happens. Uh, sometimes we just, we get ahead of ourselves, so. To ensure a smooth finish, I did sand before spraying the second coat. Now everything is sprayed, everything is completely dry. It's been one and a half days since I was last out here. So everything is dry. So, which is very important for me to move on to the next step. Now I am gonna be using the Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze and it comes in the color Java Brown. That's what I've seen the most popular being used. And it's very affordable. It's like 20 something dollars for just a single can, which goes a long way, I believe. I am gonna be using three different brushes. The smaller chip brush just to apply the glaze. The second one is to kind of distribute it and remove most of the product. And then the last one is to get that faux wood grain look on it. Even though these are mismatched nightstands, I'm trying to make them look as the same as possible because I am selling them as a set. Now, I don't think, I don't know, I've never sold a mismatched set before, but I would assume that I don't think the amount of people who are willing to buy a mismatched set are as high as somebody who's willing to purchase an actual set that are identical. I thought that this technique would be great because this style is so on trend right now. I really do think that they're gonna sell pretty quickly. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see how this goes. I've never done this before. So yeah, let's go ahead and start. Okay, so when I first started doing this, I felt like it was kind of hard to make the glaze glide on. So after I was done with the drawers and the first top for me, it felt like it was much easier to do the same first two steps using the two brushes, but then coming back and wiping it back further with my cloth to spread it out a tad more evenly before coming in with the third brush for the added texture. I also felt that in order to minimize that harsh transition and possible clumping at the transition of vertical and horizontal planes was to first do the vertical pieces, not really caring if I got the glaze on the horizontal pieces because once it was to my liking, then I could go back in and do the horizontal pieces. The glaze has such a good working time that I was not worried about it drying on me, And to seal everything, I used a satin polyurethane. I did two coats with a light sand in between. I used the old hardware hose on the one drawer to use a guide for my new hardware hose for the opposite nightstand. I also added knobs on the top drawers to help make them look a little bit more identical since one of the nightstands has that full drawer look going on.
one of the drawer guides was broken, so I went ahead and replaced it as well. To help the drawers with the wooden slides glide a little bit better, I added some wax. I also refreshed the inside of all of the drawers with some feed and wax. Now let's remember what these nice stands used to look like. And what they look like now. I've had a lot of fun trying out this new technique and I think the nightstands look great. If you've been thinking about doing this look, definitely give it a try. It takes a bit of practice so be patient, but it's very forgiving and it's easy to achieve. Hopefully you found this video helpful or you just enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to subscribe for more furniture flips and DIYs. I love y'all be kind and I'll see y'all next week. Bye!